This is Audiobook Caboodle YouTube channel. Click on the subscribe button and listen unlimited audiobooks anytime, anywhere. Box and Purse by Colette Willey. Translated by Mary Kelly. Section 8. A Caller. A winter's afternoon in Paris. The studio. A fire crackles gently in the tower-shaped stove. Toby Dog and Kiki the Demure, one on the floor, the other on his own particular cushion, proceed with the minute toilet which follows a long siesta. Peace reigns. My nails grow faster here than in the country. It's the contrary with mine. Really? Kiki the Demure bitterly. Not to be wondered at. She clips them for the sake of the hangings. Well, what can't be cured must be endured. What are you going to do today? Why, nothing. Toby Dog ironically. For a change, I suppose? Pardon, to avoid change. What is this rage for change that takes possession of you all? Change means destruction. Only that which remains stationary is eternal. I'm eternal, then, these three hours past. But you've been out with her, haven't you? You came in like a whirlwind. Bells rang, clothes were shaken out, you were sneezing and laughing and aureoled with icy air. The end of her nose felt so cold when she kissed me on the forehead. She always kisses me there, just over the dark stripes forming the classic M, which she assures me stands for Miao and for Minet, my name in French. Yes, we had a fine run on the banks of the fortifications, and then we went into a shop. Is that amusing? Not often. There are a great many people crowded together. I'm immediately seized with the fear of losing her, and I stick close to her heels no matter what comes. Strange feet push and knock me about and step on my paws. I yelp, but the skirts all around stifle my voice. When we're out of it, we both look as if we've been shipwrecked. May the gods preserve me from anything of the sort. Here the moments have glided peacefully by. When she's not in this house, there's nothing to hinder me. I employ the time as my system of hygiene dictates. After my breakfast of rosy liver and milk, my kittenhood seems to come back to me. I'm filled with a foolish gaiety. I go over to him. He's rumpling big blackish papers and welcomes me with a quiet smile. We loll on the same divan and revel in a few idle moments together. Sometimes, with imperious paw, I tear the paper he holds like a screen between us. It always seems to me the most desirable, the one that crackles best. He cries out, and I throw myself on my back and wriggle with joy in a sort of horizontal dance he calls the dance of the bayadier. Then, somehow, everything dwindles before my eyes, grows dim and far away. I want to rise and go back to my cushion, but dreams already separate me from the world. Ah, blessed hour when you and she disappear, when the house is at rest and takes a long breath. Soon I'm in the depths of a dark, sweet sleep. My ears alone keep watch and turn like sensitive antennas toward vague sounds of doors and bells. At this moment someone rings. Toby Dog and Kiki the Demure start and change their positions. The cat, sitting, encircles himself with his fluffy tail. The dog, in a sphinx-like attitude, lifts his head boldly. What's that? A tradesman? Kiki the Demure shrugging his shoulders. That's not the kitchen bell. Perhaps it's a caller. Toby Dog with a bound. What luck! They have tea and cakes! Come on! Sugar! Sugar! Little cakes! Little cakes! Kiki the Demure gloomily. To see ladies who shriek and put gloved hands on my back, hands covered with dead skin? Ugh! Feminine voices are heard, hers among them, and the clear tinkling of a little bell. Then the door opens, and a very diminutive toy terrier enters alone. She's black and tan, seems in love with herself, and comes forward with a mincing step. The little dog voice way up in her head. I'm the darling little dog, so pretty. Toby is struck dumb with admiration and astonishment. 
kiki indignant has jumped on top of the piano and remains an unseen and hostile spectator the little dog astonished at not hearing the chorus of admiration that everywhere greets her is reciting i'm the darling little dog so pretty i weigh only one pound eleven ounces my collar is gold my ears of black satin lined with shiny rubber my nails are polished like the beaks of little birds catching sight of toby dog oh someone silence he's rather good-looking they ogle and strut how tiny she is sir don't come near me why not i don't know my mistress knows she's not here she stayed in the other room how old are you eleven months reciting i'm eleven months old at the dog show my mother took first prize for beauty i weigh only one pound eleven ounces and you've said that already what makes you so little kiki the demure from the piano she's ugly and has an evil odor her paws are deformed she can't stand still an instant and this dog takes pains to make himself fascinating the little dog very coquettish and talkative it's my lineage of course one can hold me in a muff you've seen my collar it's gold and what's that hanging from it my mother's medal sir i always wear it i come from the palais de glace where i made quite a hit imagine i wanted to bite a gentleman who was speaking to my mistress how they laughed <laughs> she wriggles and chirps toby dog aside what an odd creature is she really a dog sniffs <laughs> yes smells of rice powder but it's a dog just the same aloud sit down a moment it makes me quite dizzy to see you moving about so certainly she lies down like a miniature greyhound crossing her forepaws to show the slimness of her toes you were here all alone toby dog looking toward the piano yes no other dog why there's a strange odor the cat doubtless the cat what's a cat i've never seen one do they leave you in the room all alone it happens so now and then and you don't bark i cry as soon as i'm left alone i'm bored afraid feel sick and chew up the cushions and then you're whipped the little dog insulted i'm what did you say you're losing your senses i imagine suddenly amiable again that would be a pity you have lovely eyes haven't i they show well don't they they're large and then they stick out she says i have eyes like a lobster's and sometimes she says his beautiful seal's eyes his frog-like eyes of gold who's she toby dog simple she i don't understand all you say but i find you so very sympathetic what are you doing this evening why i dine naturally i wanted to know whether they receive here this evening or do you go out no i've been out already driving walking of course why of course i hardly stir except in a carriage show me the underside of your paws horrors one would say twas the stone they sharpened knives on look at mine satin on top velvet underneath i'd like to see you in the country on the cobblestones i've been there sir i was in the country last summer and there weren't any cobblestones then it wasn't the country you don't know what country means the little dog vexed indeed i do sir it's fine sand and velvety lawns that are swept every morning it's a reclining chair on the grass great fresh cushions of cretone foamy milk naps in the shade and charming little red apples to play with toby dog shaking his head no it's the road covered with white powder that makes the eyelids smart and the paws burn the tough shriveled sweet-smelling grass where i scratch my nose and my gums it's the fearful night for i'm the only one to guard them he and she i lie in my basket but the beating of my poor overdriven heart keeps me awake i hear a dog crying to me from far off that the bad man has passed on the road is he coming in my direction 
Will I be obliged in another minute, my eyes bloodshot and tongue dry as chalk, to throw myself upon him and devour his shadowy face? The little dog trembling and in ecstasy. Go on, go on! Oh, how frightened I am! Toby Dog modestly. Don't be afraid. It has never happened. All that is the country, yes, and the interminable hill and the shadow of the carriage, when thirst, hunger, heat, and fatigue render the soul submissive and hopeless. The little dog quite worked up. And then? No, oh, nothing. One arrives at the house, after all, and the pail of dark water one drinks without taking breath. His tongue, she says, his big tongue is parted in the center like an iris petal, while sore eyelids and dusty lashes are splashed with cooling drops. The country is all that and many things besides. Kiki the demure on top of the piano musingly. All that, yes, and the habits of the year before that one finds again molded to one's shape like a cushion marked with the imprint of a long sleep. The long nights of freedom, when the lone owlet, with his sad little laugh, makes his way through the air as quietly as I do on the ground, and silvery gray rats cling to the vines, eating grapes and keeping their eyes on me at the same time. It's the sun-cure on the hot stone wall, from which I arise wan and shrunken, baked through and through, but svelte enough to make the youngest tomcat envious. Coming back to the present with a murderous look at the little dog. Death to you, ill-smelling beast, for having evoked these bygone joys. Aren't you going to disappear, that I may come down from this cold pedestal? where my paws are growing numb. Toby Dog enthusiastically to the little dog. But let us forget all that. With you there, I can think of nothing but you. I feel that I love you. The little dog lowering her eyes. Do you mean, really? Of course I do. So soon. We've already wasted a great deal of time. But we've been chatting. I've enjoyed it very much. And I fail to understand why the society of young dogs like you is forbidden me. Allow me to make love to you. What's that? I'll show you. First, I hold myself very erect, stiffen my legs, walk round you, barking low and melodiously. My tail wriggles, my ears... Don't come near me! I feel quite upset! Escaping. <laughs> you unmannerly fellow! Kiki the Demure standing up. These preludes are indeed a sad parody on our wild love-making. Aloud, very angry. I should think. The little dog looks to see where the dreadful voice is coming from, and espies a strange striped monster with eyes afire, and eyebrows and whiskers bristling ferociously. She dashes towards the door, crying, Help! Help! There's a tiger on the piano! and falls into the arms of her mistress, who has come upon the scene, and proceeds to console her with great volubility. Fifi, my Suzette, my darling, there, there, goo, 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 you poor, helpless little doggy. What did they do to her? Oh, was it the naughty bow-wow? Etc., etc. End of section 8 End of Barks and Purrs by Colette Willey, translated by Mary Kelly. This was Audiobook Caboodle YouTube channel presentation. We hope you enjoyed listening. For full audiobook, check out our playlist section. Links in description below.